This is the first of two key concept videos on the nervous system. The nervous system, along with the endocrine system, is essential for the overall control of functions such as metabolism, homeostasis and reproduction. In the video, we will look at the structure of neurons, the transmission of nerve impulses and the difference between myelinated and unmyelinated neurons. The nervous system is composed of neurons which form neural pathways to every part of the body. There are three main types of neurons, sensory, relay and motor neurons. This diagram here shows a motor neuron. These are the dendrites, tree-like branches extending from the neuron cell body. Their primary function is to receive neurotransmitter signals from other neurons and carry the impulse towards the cell body. The cell body, also known as the soma, is the part of a neuron that contains the nucleus and other essential cellular components. It is the main metabolic and structural region of the neuron. Then this is the axon, the long thin extension of the neuron. It plays a crucial role in transmitting the action potential over long distances. Along the axon we can see Schwann cells. These specialised cells insulate the axon with a protective myelin sheath by wrapping themselves around the axon, making layers of cell membranes. You can see a Schwann cell in this photomicrograph here, with its layers of cell membrane. This insulation, provided by the Schwann cells, prevents the ions from diffusing across the membrane, leaking out of the neuron. Not all neurons are myelinated. There are also non-myelinated neurons. In humans, unmyelinated neurons are found in the central nervous system. At regular intervals along this axon are nodes of Ranvier. These are small gaps between the Schwann cells, where ion channels are concentrated. We will return to these later. Finally, at the end of the axon, we have the synaptic knobs, bulbs or axon terminals. This is where neurotransmitters are released, enabling the signal to be transferred to the next cell. Now that we have reviewed the structure of a myelinated neuron, let's look at how the nervous impulse is conducted, starting with a typical unmyelinated neuron. A logical place to start is when the neuron is not transmitting an impulse. When an action potential is not being transmitted, the neuron is said to be at resting potential. During this stage, the sodium-potassium pumps in the membrane of the neuron use the energy from ATP to pump three sodium ions out of the neuron for every two potassium ions in, causing the inside of the neuron to become negative compared to the outside. There are negatively charged organic ions permanently located inside the neuron and also many potassium leakage channels in the neuron's plasma membrane, allowing potassium ions to leak out of the neuron. These negatively charged organic ions and the leaking of the potassium ions further increase the negative charge on the inside compared to the outside of the neuron. This can be seen on the oscilloscope reading here. You can see that there is an electrode inside the neuron and one on the surface of the cell membrane. This enables the oscilloscope to measure the membrane potential and you can see that it reads minus 70 millivolts. At rest, a human neuron is approximately minus 70 millivolts on the inside compared to the outside. When a neuron is stimulated, sodium channels in the neuron membrane open and sodium ions start to diffuse down their concentration gradient into the neuron, making the charge inside less negative. If the threshold potential is reached, which in humans is approximately minus 55 millivolts, then sodium voltage-gated channels open and the sodium ions flood into the neuron, causing even more sodium voltage-gated channels to open, and so influx of sodium continues to increase. This is an example of positive feedback. This stage of rapid sodium ion influx and increase in positive charge is known as depolarization. Once the charge has been reversed, and in humans the charge is approximately plus 40 millivolts inside compared to the outside, an action potential is said to have been generated. You can see this charge recorded on the oscilloscope here. During this process, the potassium channels and sodium-potassium pumps remain closed. 
At the peak of the action potential here at plus 40 millivolts, the sodium voltage gated channels close and the potassium voltage gated channels open. Repolarization has now begun. Potassium ions flow out of the neuron down their concentration gradient, restoring the negative charge inside compared to the outside. As you can see on the graph here, the negative charge slightly overshoots the original resting potential. This is known as hyperpolarization. Then the sodium potassium pump restores the original resting potential so that the next action potential can be triggered. So we have now looked at how the action potential comes about. But what about the transmission of the nervous impulses along the neuron? In unmyelinated neurons, the action potential spreads through local currents. When an action potential is generated at the initial segment of the axon, sodium ions diffuse along the axon, making the membrane potential across the next section of the axon membrane less negative, so that the threshold potential is reached in the adjacent segment. This then triggers the opening of the sodium voltage gated channels in this next section of the axon membrane, and so an action potential is generated. This self-propagation of an action potential means that once a nerve impulse has been triggered at the dendrite end of a neuron, it will continue all along the cell to the terminal end of the axon. So if this is how an action potential passes along an unmyelinated neuron, what about a myelinated one? Well, as we saw, Schwann cells wrap around the axon forming a myelin sheath. This myelin sheath increases the rate at which an action potential can pass along the axon membrane. It insulates the axon, preventing changes in the membrane potential where the Schwann cell is located. As mentioned earlier, there are many sodium ion channels at the nodes of Ranvier between the Schwann cells. The depolarization of the membrane therefore occurs rapidly at these nodes, and the rush of sodium ions into the cell causes a local current to flow passively through the intracellular fluid of the axon. The current travels along the inside of the axon to reach the next node of Ranvier. At the next node of Ranvier, the depolarization from the previous node of Ranvier stimulates the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels once again. This allows the influx of sodium ions and generates a new action potential at that node. Therefore, the action potential effectively jumps from node to node, increasing the speed at which it moves along the axon, a process known as saltatory conduction. You can think about the nerve impulse passing along the axon of an unmyelinated neuron, a bit like a row of people doing a Mexican or stadium wave, like this here. The difference between unmyelinated and myelinated neurons, however, is that in myelinated neurons, instead of everybody having to do the Mexican wave, it is like only every tenth person has to do the wave to pass it on. It is important to note that if the threshold is reached, the same positive charge of depolarization is reached. There are no strong or weak impulses. If the threshold potential is not reached, there is no action potential triggered. This is known as the all or nothing response. So, in this video we have seen how dendrites are extensions of a neuron that receive incoming signals from other neurons or sensory receptors. An axon is the long thin projection of a neuron that carries action potentials away from the cell body. Schwann cells wrap around neurons to form an insulating myelin sheath. Nodes of Ranvier are unmyelinated gaps between Schwann cells on the axon of a myelinated neuron. The resting potential is the potential difference across the cell membrane of a neuron while it is not conducting an action potential. It is about minus 70 millivolts inside compared to the outside. Sodium potassium pumps are protein carriers that use energy from ATP to move three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell against their concentration gradients. An action potential is a brief and rapid change in the electrical potential of a neuron involving depolarization and repolarization. Voltage-gated channels are channel proteins in plasma membranes that open and close in response to changes in membrane potential, controlling the passage of ions. The threshold potential is the minimum membrane potential that must be reached to initiate an action potential. 
local currents bring about the threshold potential in successive areas of the axon, and saltatory conduction is the rapid transmission of nerve impulses along myelinated neurons due to the action potential jumping between nodes of Ranvier.